Charles Barkley will be debuting a new show on TNT in 2017, the trailer for which is titled The Race Card. Have a look. Quiet on the set. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. I'm good. I'm rolling right now. Uh, yeah. Tell us why you want to do the show. What's the show about? The show is about race. Race has been the biggest problem in my adult life, and I want to provide a conversation. I was born in 1963 when they bombed a church in Birmingham, Alabama, and now 53 years later, we're still fighting over the same stupidity. We've been talking about doing this show for probably three or four years. Unfortunately, it comes at a time when we have more racial divide, uncertainty. Baltimore, Orlando, New York City, Ferguson, Missouri. People never talk about race until something bad happens, and then all they do is yell and scream. The thing I want to do is try to make it better, especially with the cops, because the police aren't always bad guys. Hollywood does an awful job. You know, if you're a Muslim, you know you're going to be portrayed negatively. If you're Hispanic, the only time you ever mention is with illegal immigration. I speak up for my gay and lesbian friends. I think what they're doing in North Carolina is, is not right. I just want to give people a seat at the table and give an honest opinion. But nobody's an expert. Are you an expert? Nobody's an expert. This is not about black and white. It's about Hispanic, it's about Muslims, it's about Jewish people, it's about everybody. We're all in this thing together. I want to do my part. What's your part? A bold show for Charles Barkley, and one that I'm sure will get good ratings, one that I'm going to tune into. Uh, mm -hmm. For a couple reasons. One, I enjoy watching Charles Barkley. I think the NBA on TNT panel itself is one of the best things that ever happened to the NBA. Uh, Kenny Smith alongside Charles Barkley, Shaq's personality. Ernie Johnson's a great fit for that. But what Charles Barkley's getting at here, and the thing, the biggest thing I took away from his, at least his trailer, and a point that really does acro acro across everything outside of just black and white, he says, is we don't talk about certain things until something bad happens, mm -hmm. which is probably never been truer words spoken. Something, some tragedy happens. We, I don't want to say just we as in everybody, but a lot of people care for a certain amount of time, mm -hmm. and then they stop caring altogether. They don't talk about it anymore. There's a million examples of this. Race in America is one of them. Mass shootings is another one. Earth, uh, uh, hurricane relief is another one. Mm -hmm. Like, it, it, what, if it's a popular topic at the time, it gets talked about, and then it fades. It fades until the next new big tragedy, unfortunately, comes along. Uh, yeah, I'm excited to watch this. I'm also excited that this is something that TNT in general are exploring. Like, they're clearly understanding that this is an issue that just cannot be tabled with a Trent Dilfer comment on Colin Kaepernick once in a while. It has to be addressed. Mm -hmm. It has to be discussed, hence why last night uh, in the NBA season opener, there was an hour long, when you could be discussing all the things that LeBron James's beads of sweat stand for, they spent an hour long talking about uh, open court sports and society, that was what it was called, and you have uh, Kenny Smith, Shaq, Charles Barkley, the full panel, but you also had Jim Brown on there, mm -hmm. which was a great addition, and it added so much different uh, different perspectives on, on this issue. So Charles Barkley said some things I agreed with, said some things I didn't agree with, uh, Kenny Smith said some things I didn't agree with, but then touched on something that I thought was the core issue, which is, you know, doing videos here, doing videos on Facebook for the main show. Like, the same thing I always talk about is this deflection. He's kneeling. He's doing this. Like, who cares? It's all about the issue that he's he's actually focusing on, right, which right. is what Kenny Smith was talking about. Jim Brown, uh, a huge advocate for this, someone that just a name pops into your head when you're talking about uh, standing up for uh, racial injustices. And he was saying that, he didn't agree with the way that Colin Kaepernick was doing this, that he would have, he, everyone needs to stand. And then um, who's the bow tie? Uh, the, Ernie Johnson. Yeah, Ernie Johnson as well was saying that, that he wouldn't do that. And then Shaq, out of all of them, I think said the, 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 the best takeaway that I had from this whole conversation. Shaq said, if you're going to get involved, whatever way you want to get involved, it's a full-time job. It's not right, just right. speak out when it suits you. It's not just, this is my thoughts. Because this guy asked me, what was your thoughts on Kaepernick? Or this is your thoughts on racial injustice? Or this is your thoughts on police, uh, police brutality? Yep, that's it. And then shut off. That's why I did a whole video calling out people like Drew Brees, who I thought commented out when it suited them and then kept quiet. That's why I called out people that I think just got involved because they didn't like 
what this one football player was doing or how he was doing it rather than the actual whole issue. And I think that Charles Barkley is taking that the next step. He's like, okay, I understand that this is what you guys are, uh, are, are talking about and it is a problem, but I'm going to go further and not talk about it just when something happens, but what is going on year-round and what's been going on since. My hope is that it just creates more activism, right? So Carmelo Anthony recently came up, Bleacher Report did a full feature, and just not just Carmelo Anthony, but it was many of the NBA athletes. I know Damian Lillard is behind this as well. Uh, Kevin Durant is someone who's been behind this as well for a long time. Uh, activism. They've pretty much decided that it's not so much uh, what are you going to do on national TV when the cameras and lights are on. Mm -hmm. It's what are you doing when the cameras and lights aren't on. Are you going into communities to find ways to help? Are you giving back to your community? And the NBA, like the organizations like the NBA Cares, uh, is truly one of the more progressive and uh, I would say game changers across all sports. Bill Simmons' article yesterday in The Ringer, he doesn't write that much anymore. Obviously, he's writing for his HBO show any given Wednesday, but mm -hmm. uh, when it comes down to writing in The Ringer, it's one of the things we were alluding to on a clip a couple days ago that we shot that I think is going up today or tomorrow, mm -hmm. uh, whenever it goes up. So the point he was making is, while well, the NFL is somebody who can't seem to get a grip on taking a step back with every single what you would think would be an open window to being progressive, making a difference, making a big change, giving back to the community, caring about certain issues, mm -hmm. right? The NBA does it better than anybody else. Uh, it's no wonder why. And his biggest point is like, this all stems back to how successful the NBA has become. Mm -hmm. And not only about the money that's being poured in, not the fact that like Alan Crabb is a top 20 pay, paid player in the NBA. His takeaway from that is, that's awesome because it means that they are growing globally and part of that is not just because the product of basketball is exciting, it's because the players are relatable, they're making a difference at the mission statement behind the entirety of the NBA. Yeah. This is, by the way, a league that a decade ago was sweating because they weren't sure if they were going to be able to bust out of a bad stereotype, a bad reputation. Don't forget how much Allen Iverson changed the landscape of the NBA. Because of one guy, David Stern made there be a dress code. Yeah. Right? But that actual enactment, that actual move, this degree of professionalism had such a big impact that that professionalism carried over into what we see from the players today. Carmelo Anthony's and Kevin Durant's and Russell Westbrook's. But it's not just what's happening on the court. What I like to see from the players, what I like reading about from the players, is they're making a difference and they have such a powerful voice uh, specifically NBA players I'm, athletes I in general a few, because by the way, yeah. NBA athletes plus uh, by percentage uh, have the highest amount of African Americans participating in the sport this is these are guys that have all came from similar prejudices that we see today they have came from backgrounds where they have been racially discriminated against and have obstacles in front of what them, such as schooling. about Barkley growing up? It was when the well, Barkley grew up in an area where uh, the Ku Klux Klan, in the year that they originated and, and burned down uh, buildings and stuff like that, that's yeah, what he was okay. mentioning there. So like these guys are all relatable, as you mentioned, and they have faced the same adversity, and they've broke past it, and they've found ways to deal with it. So it's so enlightening for them to get back to the communities and be like, this is what can happen. I mean, you don't know, it's unrealistic to be like, everyone can be an NBA star. Everyone can be if you put the work in, but you can get out of these circumstances. You can fight up against this adversity. And it's not just going in and talking to them, but it's addressing issues that not just focus on police brutality, but as such as Kenny Smith was pointing out again, it's like incarceration issues. It's uh, social economic issues. Things that we often bypass because we'll just, like people who want to speak out on it will focus on one thing. They either agree or disagree with a guy kneeling, and that's it. Whereas there, if you look into it, there's so much further problems that all play into this one issue. Yeah, people will often resort to one answer. It's either, no, it's their own fault, it's a black on black crime, it's this, 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 or they'll either say, all right, I'm with them, but then they don't look into what actually he's standing with. So yeah. I like that they're exploring every different aspect of it. Views on race throughout the country that like Charles Barkley's talking about, uh, including Muslim, including Hispanics, including all these different people that face some sort of adversity. And then Kenny Smith's like, they should also look into the incarceration, maybe visit the fact that some of these, the, 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 the higher majority of black people are incarcerated and punished uh, for crimes more so than what white people are statistically. These things are backed up. So there's many different issues that play into it. It's one of the most complex discussions that you could have with anyone. But I always have my point of view as I read into these things. I listen specifically to what 
those that are, have been oppressed have to say, try to understand their point and do my own research and go and look into issues that I think really deserve the attention. So I think that TNT are doing it right because yeah, I, really, I really enjoyed that show last night. They're, uh, they're capitalizing too. They're capitalizing at a time when the ratings are very high. Mm. They're gonna get a lot of eyeballs, a lot of people to watch and listen and it's gonna be taken, and it's gonna circulate. And by the way, the most important thing that can come out of any of these is the conversation continues, the discussion continues, because it's not, I should say not the most, most important thing is activism, going out and doing something about it, but you know, secondly, having the people that have the voice and the platform to talk about these things. Because it's not like, uh, these conversations didn't happen 10 years ago, and obviously we can see it's not like it's gonna get any better if it doesn't continue that way, at least. All right, wrap us up, Francis. All right, hit us in the comment section below. Let us know what you think. Are you excited to see Charles Barkley's show? Did you stick around before or after last night, whatever time you wanted to watch the NBA show and watch Charles Barkley, Shaq, all of those guys talking um, about uh, open court sports and society? Because they're crossing over as much as we always try to think that they might be uh, separated. Unfortunately, that's it's not unfortunate. It's that it has to be. It's necessary that these people speak out, that these athletes speak out, because they have a lot of truth and power to their message. Hit us in the comments on Twitter, Francis underscore Maxwell, Jason Ruben91. We'll see you guys soon.